In this video, we're gonna talk about the new features that were added to this UI version 3.1.0. Let's get started. This UI version 3.1.0 comes with a theme management system, among other new things. But this is the, the main thing that we added to, to the system. And you'll notice you go to Tools, Doozy, Control Panel, you have a new tab called Themes. And here you can create as many themes with as many theme variants as you would like. So let me create a new theme, let's say Special Theme. And you will see that we have some properties. So you can change the color, color for images, particle systems, sprite renderers, texts, and so on. You can uh, swap sprites, textures, fonts, and font assets. And I'm gonna go to this theme that already has some things added to it. So basically out of the box, we give you some color properties when you create a new theme like this one. And you can always rename them and add more. They use an ID system, a GUID system um, in, uh, in the background. So basically you're not, you're not using uh, sprites, but you're um, using IDs. So uh, let me show you. You also have some new some new things added. So here, right click, Doozy, Themes, and you have a theme manager that basically doesn't have any setting because you do not really need to, to have it in your scene. It will be automatically added on demand. And if you need to use it, you really don't need a direct reference because it's a singleton and it will create itself. And then, you have some new things called targets. So you have color targets. That means change the color of a target image, of a target particle system, of a target row image, and so on. Font target. And here you can change the font of a text or a font target text mesh pro. Here you can change the font asset target of a text mesh pro text component. Basically, you can swap out fonts. fonts. And here you can change the sprite for an image a sprite for a sprite render and a texture for a raw image. Here I have some images and I am um, I'm changing the color. So I'm using color target image from another theme. So basically when we change the active variant, now we have one, the active variant. So when you change it, the colors also change. So this is how the system works. Of course, we can also add, let's add here a color target. Um, let's go to the sprite target. Right. So I can also change the, the sprite. And here I have some sprites that when I change the, there you go. When I change the, the, the variant, I can, uh, I can see them. Let's make it preserve aspect. You get the idea, basically you can even change the background if you want to do that. So let me add a um, raw image, UI raw image. Let's uh, maximize it. And put it to the background. And let's add a uh, texture target raw image. And there you go. Now I have textures. So basically whenever we swap, can change these things like that now so this is how the new system works you can change out fonts and so on let's create a text component if i can find it let's uh, let's make it white actually let's also change its color so Best fit. Let's add a color target text so we can change the color to the accent color, primary color. Yeah, something like that. So now the text changes color and it also changed the font. So font target text. And again, you will notice how the font changes. Let's set the subtitle. So this is how the system works. You can change basically a lot of things just by uh, changing the active variant. 
And of course, this also works at runtime because you have a new node, a theme node. And here I have a graph controller that uses it. So basically we have three buttons, one, two, and three. And we have some new options for the portal node and I'm gonna delete everything so you can see how it works. Some new things that we added are, uh, there are new options for portal nodes and for weight nodes. And this uh, will allow you to create a lot of new things. So I'm gonna create a portal node. And here, up until this version, you can only listen for a game event. Now you can listen for a UI button and you can listen for any of these uh, options. For, for, for my particular example, I'm gonna use onClick. You can, use, you can listen for a view when it's shown or hidden. And this is useful if you have tab groups. And you can even listen when a drawer opens or closes or is being dragged to, to uh, get the control of, uh, of your particular graph. So this will allow a lot of flexibility in your designs. So right now I want whenever I click button number one, these are just some simple buttons, button one, button two, and button three. They do not do anything else except on click. That's it. So I want this, uh, portal node to react when button one is clicked. I want to use my new uh, node, the theme node, to activate variant one from another theme. Of course, you can, if you change the theme, you will have different variant names. But right now I want to change the target variant to variant one. Let's also set this as, as the default variant. And let's create one more navigation portal. Again, listen for when a UI button is clicked and that UI button is button number two. And again, I want to change the active variant. And I'll say, instead of another theme one, I'll say another theme two. And I would like one more. Actually, let's copy this. And here I'll say when I, when I click button three, I want to activate variant three. These are just names. You can write whatever you want here. So let's say ABC. I'm going to change right now the variant names. So you can see that they all change everywhere. So I'll say A, B, and C. And you see that it changed here and here everywhere because this works with IDs and not with strings. Uh, when I go wrong, this should be B and this should be C, yeah. So button one activates variant A, button two activates variant B, and button three activates variant C. And this happens at runtime without any, without writing a single line of code. Of course, I also need to reference this graph. Oh, it's already referenced in my graph controller. And let's see it in action. All right. So variant now variant one is the one that is active. Let's go to two. Let's go to three. So you basically can swap out and change your themes from light to dark, to Christmas, to Halloween, to whatever you may need, light, dark, red, blue. Yeah. And this is how the system works. And these are some of the new options. Uh, the weight node, also has uh, some new options. So let's create a system node, a weight node, and you will see that you also have, it can listen for, so basically if you're um, waiting for a response from a server or something, you can also use weight nodes to show uh, when a view is shown and you can specify which view, something should happen with your graph. So basically you, you have a lot of new options to, to create flows or when a button is clicked, so it will wait until that particular button is clicked, otherwise it will not work. Yeah, and uh, these are just the, the new things that we added to, to the system. Of course, uh, there are also some minor things like uh, this refresh button that does a complete database refresh and recreates your folder, so if you have any issues, with the system, you should first try to click this button, this refresh button. That's what we uh, strongly advise you to do. 
And other than that, um, there's also a silent automatic, uh, automatic, automated folders validation process when opening the control panel. We just made the system a bit uh, more stable so, so that it, uh, it works nicer. And of course, there are some uh, uh, other things like uh, the play mechanism back action has been fixed. Progress target progress targets no longer references. Uh, active node uh, no longer stop uh, no longer react when the graph controller is disabled and so on. And uh, yeah, that's it for uh, version three that one that zero. We added a lot of new things and we can't wait to see the project that you create with it. Thank you very much.